Hey there, how you doing? This is D, and welcome to Uneven. I'm sitting on the porch this afternoon as a thunderstorm rolls through. It is Friday, I think June 21st, mid-afternoon. Enjoying the change in weather, the cool down, and just Mother Nature changing things up. Change is good. Even thunder is good. Especially when you're not in danger of it causing any problems. Oh, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I want to update you real briefly. I know my podcasts have been darker lately, and this one's not going to exactly change that right away. But I do think there's a lot of lessons we can learn from the darkness, from difficult times, from pain, from sadness, from grief, from negativity. And so I don't want to be a podcast that only records when things are going well. I think that's really what it comes down to. That and talking to you is cathartic for me. It helps me process things. and So I'm going to keep doing it. If anything else, it's just a journal, it's a record of what life throws at us sometimes. Recently, you might have, if you've listened to the last couple podcasts, you realize my father-in-law was in failing health. He passed away about four days ago, surrounded by his family. It was uh, an experience. I was there for a long time. And some lessons were learned. It's part of life death is part of life and it's hard for us to accept that sometimes but it is and I can tell you right now of anybody who probably needs to have accepted that lately or has been um, faced with that a lot lately it might be me after losing now seven people in the last two and a half years I've never grown accustomed to it but I've gotten familiar with it I don't want to talk about details about my father-in-law. I think that's private, and I don't want to share that except to say that he passed on. My wife is um, doing the best she can. She's struggling. She was very close to her father. I was very close to her father, Um, and we miss him greatly. But it creates a very somber tone and somber mood, and rightly so. And that along with my ongoing symptoms, my hyperalgesia, paresthesia, and nerve nerve issues, basically nerve pain. And the stabbing pain that I get periodically in my foot. Um, I'm dealing with that too. And I'm managing. I'm getting by. My wife has been up at her mom's house now for a couple days, and I'm solo again at the house. Just me and Murphy here, my dog. In fact, I just gated him on the deck so he doesn't run out in the rain, which he would do. And he just had a bath a couple days ago, so I don't want him getting soaked and dirty or anything like that. So he's pacing around with me on my patio as the rain comes down. The thunder echoes throughout the front range here of Colorado. And and the breeze blows. Hopefully it's not too loud here on the on the microphone that I'm recording on. A lot of things happened and a lot of things I want to share. (sighs) First of all, in just generalities, again, no specifics, the experience of losing someone, the experience of somebody taking their last breath is an extremely powerful experience, as you might imagine. For those of you who have been through it, you know what I'm talking about. For those who haven't, I'm sure you can imagine what, what that would be like. You want to go inside? Okay, there we go. Murphy went back inside. I think the thunder was starting to bother him. He does pretty well with thunder most of the time, unlike some dogs, but 
I think it might be a little much for him out here. I think I approach it like this, which is death is part of life. It's something we all will experience personally ourselves at some point. It's also something that we experience with other people. If you have any relationships at all with other people, then we are going to lose them sometimes, and that's going to happen. But people die in so many different ways. Being surrounded by a loving family, and he was here, my father-in-law was surrounded by his loving family, which was amazing. Or like my parents, where, you know, my dad, nobody was there, and he was at a a rest, a rest home, a nursing home, and I was trying to get him moved to someplace else, and it wasn't a good situation. I don't want to go into details now, but... And then I was called that morning, just somebody on the phone said, oh, your dad died. And it wasn't a good experience. Not that this is a good experience. I'm just saying it's not the way it should happen. As if there are shoulds in this world, but I don't believe it's the way it should happen. But when you lose so many people in a row, as I have, then they pile up. And you, you wonder the message, you wonder the lesson, you wonder why... You question everything, and you try to figure out what you're supposed to grab from this, what you're supposed to garner from this, what you're supposed to walk away with. And when you also have this neuropathy and nerve pain kicking your butt at the same time, you really have to ask your question of why, and I've been asking that a lot. Yesterday morning, my wife left to head back up to her mom's house to stay with her for a few days and as soon as she closed or as soon as the garage door went down and she drove away I started to bawl cry emotional release whatever you want to call it I was crying let's just face it and let's call a let's call it what it is and I let that out and it felt good I mean I'm embracing those now because I know they're valuable and I let that out and then there was another one after and I let that out. And I, I figured I'm in this mood right now and I'm by myself and this is the time to, to do this. And I've talked about emotional releases on this podcast before. But these were starting to get more powerful than I have felt in years. I think all the way back to the beginning of my benzo withdrawal when things were really dark. And so I finally decided to turn on a movie and um, thought, you know, maybe I just watch a movie for a little bit. But instead of watching a movie to distract myself, I decided let's watch a movie that maybe is a little sentimental or something. And so I just picked one, a new movie on my server. I have a server here with all these movies and I've put a whole bunch of new movies on here I haven't gotten around to watching yet. And so I picked one and I started playing it. Didn't know the plot, just knew it was about a man and his dog thought it might be sentimental the name of the movie was Hachi starring Richard Gere and it was an American remake of a Japanese movie and a Japanese story about an Akita dog who a man adopts basically from who was hanging out at a train station and who becomes his loyal companion and who starts to sit at the, at the train station waiting for him to come home every day and he'd come home and the dog would be there and he'd walk home with you and that already started to hit me just the the dog waiting for him what these characters are going through it just started to hit me and so i cried some more now for those of you who have not seen the movie and want to see the movie i'm giving a spoiler warning right now because i need to tell you what's going on to um to describe this but this is sad um <laughs> to say the least and anyway it feels to me like this movie made old yeller um feel almost like a comedy okay this is a legendary story because early on in the movie richard Gere's character dies sudden heart attack and they try to find a home with the daughter for hachi so that he can go spend time with the daughter but he doesn't want to stay there. There's only one place that Hachi wants to be, and that is waiting at the train station. 
for his loyal friend to come home. And he is the loyal friend to this man. And it just kills you. It killed me when I found out he died and I paused, I think I paused this movie about a dozen times just to bawl and cry. And I'm talking guttural cry, the kind that just is deep inside and you're letting crap out from way back when. For me, a lot of it was my dad, my mom, who I lost a couple years ago. It was my father-in-law, who I just lost and watched fade away in front of me. It was my own pain, my own struggles with these symptoms I have lingering from this experience with these drugs, with benzodiazepines. It's a partly a pity party for me and all the loss we've had. And another friend I just lost a few weeks ago. And all that wrapping up. And I knew I needed to process this. I knew I needed to just embrace it. And so I did. So I kept going. The movie kept running on. And the dog kept showing up, waiting. Waiting for his master to come home. For nine years. And that hit me. And it hit me every time the dog was there. It hit me when the widow, widow actually sits down next to him and waits with the dog. And it hit me when the dog dies. Oh, how poignant. And I kept crying. I think for about four hours that morning, I was crying off and on yesterday morning. Letting out emotion that had been trapped in there for a long time. Being careful not to hyperventilate because I have that tendency when I let out that much emotion, but I luckily avoided that. But it kept going and going. And then at the end, when I saw the closing credits and realized this was based on a true story. This was a real dog in Japan who actually waited for nine years for his master or friend, however you want to call it, to come home. And I don't know about you, but I am a big animal lover. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks over and over again. And it was painful. And it was helpful. Just letting that out. (sighs) I felt a little better after that. I felt emotional. I was raw. But I also felt a little better after that. If you want to come out, come back out. Murphy's coming back out to join me. And so are these moths. We're getting inundated by Miller moths. They're migrating through Colorado right now, so they're all over our our front and back doors and patios. But that's a sidestep. Um, (laughs) that's, That's a tangent. Murphy's kind of beautiful in this breeze that's blowing through pretty good, this wind. His hair is just blowing back, and he's got his face in it with his eyes squinted closed and just enjoying the wind on his fur. It's kind of beautiful. But that was probably the most powerful sob fest or emotional release or whatever that I have had since my parents died. Two and a half years ago. Although about two years ago. Two and a half. Something like that. And I know I needed it. And I know I need more of it. To let that out. But it was good. And it was so powerful. Unlike the ones I've had before. It was much more guttural. And much more. I don't know the term for it. Raw. Raw. I think raw might be the right term. But it was good, and I felt a little better afterwards. Still raw, still emotional, but release. And, and my, my neurology, my, my, my neuro, neuro, neuropathy, um, 
paresthesia and stuff all also faded. It's it's funny how you know you let all that out and suddenly my zaps and stuff going on and my my nerve pain eased for a while. It kind of got released with that session and that was a good thing. Hey, now you can hear the rain coming in. This is great ambiance for a podcast, isn't it? Hopefully the wind's not too bad on the microphone, but boy, I'm enjoying enjoying the weather. And Murphy's got his nose into the rain just enough to feel the rain on his nose and trying to figure out what's going on. What you doing, Murph? What you doing, buddy? Huh? He's a good boy and been a good companion for me. I've needed that. I've needed that lately. It gets pretty lonely here sometimes. And Wind's kicking up. More rain's coming in. And today is a little better. Still waiting for the next foot pain to hit me, which can happen any time during the day. And But I, I learned to live with it. And it's something to learn to live with. And it's a lesson I have to learn, which is sometimes there are things that are out of your control that are extremely negative, like sharp stabbing pain out of the blue. But you have to learn to work around it. You have to keep moving forward. You have to be there for the other people in your life and you have to help them. Help them through the struggles that they're experiencing. And I am now coming inside where it might be a little calmer. And so is Murphy. Okay. Rain started blowing so much it started to rain on the entire patio. So I decided... I'm not getting wet. I'm going to go inside. Oh, anyway. I know there's lessons in the things we go through. And yesterday I kind of shared with you the whole sitting vigil thing. And also another movie um, yesterday in lessons I think I picked up from that. And This lesson from this movie was different. It was two things I picked up. And... You know, I like getting lessons from places. And movies are good places I think we can pick up lessons. And I think songs we can pick up lessons. I think events that happen in our life we can get lessons. I think everything that happens to us is a lesson, good or bad. I think we learn more usually from the bad because those are the ones who that really stick with us. But we learn from the good, too, of what works, of what's helping us move forward. I've been dark lately. I've been struggling lately. I spoke with a friend of mine, um, who, a friend of mine from the Benzo Free Podcast who I met a long time ago and become a good personal friend and spoke with him this morning about going through a very similar thing as I am. And now it becomes this puzzle. And I don't know how many of you have done that, whether you've had Benzo experience, which I know some of you have had, but that's not the, that's not the subject of this podcast. Or... Your, 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 your anxiety or your panic attacks or your, like me, neuropathy or, you know, whatever conditions you're dealing with, mental, physical, whatever. What triggers them? There's this constant investigatory, is that the word investigatory? I don't know. I like it. I'm sticking with it. Um, <laughs> investigatory. <laughs> I don't know. I like making up words process we go through and for me with symptoms you know running now for almost 10 years from my experience with taking benzodiazepines i have had dozens upon dozens of symptoms all kinds of neurological and other symptoms happening for the past several years come and go and each time one comes on we we play this game we we investigate and we start to think through okay what's causing it is it just my experience with benzos for me or or for you maybe it's your experience with your anxiety is it the sugar you ate um is it stress you're under maybe stress you don't even know you're dealing with maybe grief like i've been processing lately maybe being lost, maybe not feeling like you belong. Boy, I feel like that, like crazy in this new world. Boy, I can tell you I don't feel like I belong. But it can be anything. It can be personal loss. It can be strife. It can be arguments, disagreements with those you love or colleagues. It can be Something somebody said on social media or a post or something. It can be anything. It can be 
missing out on life or missing out on an event or not being included in something. There's so many causes of negative emotions. They come from all over the place. And we have to process them. But when we get these feelings or get these results or we get these symptoms like I do, we don't always know what the specific cause is. And it's often more than one. And so we do this investigation and we start to figure it out. And I've been doing that with my recent neuropathy issues. And I did it a year ago <laughs> with dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing and tight throat and stuff. And I went through all kinds of stuff and tests and even had my esophagus dilated because we're trying to find the cause. My guess on that one was it was benzos and probably COVID. And my guess on this one, it's probably the same thing. Although I do think the stabbing pain in the foot might be something specific to that nerve. And maybe I'm hoping um, I have an upcoming appointment with neural, a, neural, a, neurologist, a neurologist. And I'm hoping I can get an answer there and maybe a solution, or at least a temporary solution for it. But it's crazy because we go through this cycle. I'm sure all of us do when we have such debilitating effects in our life, whether it be psychological, you know, intense fears, anxieties, depressions, just things that just remove your will to live. To physical ones like random pain and, and body aches and back pain and paresthesia, like I'm dealing with the pins and needles and, you know, other pains, you know, severe pains like cancer or whatever else is going on. And we want answers. We want to know specifically what's causing that. I know I do. Because then we can attack it. Then we can say, okay, like for me, hey, sugar is what did it. Okay, I can reduce my diet. And I've been working on that lately. But then, of course, you find out it wasn't just sugar. It was something else. Maybe it's the stress and the grief. So after that big release I had yesterday, I felt better for a little while. But then the fear returned of oncoming pain and problems, and it didn't last forever. And then you talk to somebody on the phone like I did this morning about having the same symptoms. So what's common here? Why are we both having similar symptoms around the same time? That's different. That's unique. And that sends me down another path, which is what I'm on right now, trying to figure all this out. But the problem with all of this is that this investigatory, see, I'm sticking with it. It might be a real word. I don't know. But this investigatory process also creates stress, also creates anxiety. We so desperately want answers. I so desperate. I've been looking all over the internet for things about neuropathy and about foot pain and plantar fasciitis and perineal um, tendonitis and all kinds of things and also about grief and processing grief and and how it comes out with different people and and the experience and, and the experience of dying and what that does to your psyche and how you handle that and how you don't handle that and I mean I research research actually sometimes calms me sometimes but it can also cause stress all by itself. But it can drive you crazy. I've had so many, I've had this foot pain for two and a half months. And I think, well, if I sit in certain positions, it could set it off. I know if I drive or ride in a car, it sets it off. I haven't driven for almost a month now. If I work at my desk and sit in a certain position, it seems to set it off. So I get in about 30 minutes to an hour a day of work. And I try to find new places to sit where I, I'm not affected by that as much. If I think about all the things, all the loss, then I can start to let some emotional release and maybe that's a break. We try meditation. I have been doing yoga. I've been doing stretching and exercises from my back. I've had a lot of back pain with this neuropathy. And 
I've been doing stretches. I've been doing foot stretches and exercises. I've been trying different shoes and inserts. I've been, <laughs> I've been trying everything. I'm sharing this with you because I know I'm not the only person that goes through stuff like this. And I don't know about you, but I feel a little better when I hear somebody else also is struggling. Not because I want them to. There's no schadenfreude here. I'm not enjoying somebody else's misery at all. But I am enjoying somebody's company. I am enjoying the fact that I'm not alone. I am enjoying that by talking to somebody else. Maybe they have an answer or a solution or something that may help. And maybe I can provide something to them. So I reach out. And I talk to friends. Friends I met along the way. I have recently reached out to my friend in Iowa. And I reached out to my friend in Louisiana. Who have been good friends of mine going along the way. And of course my old buddy JB, many of you know. Um, he's been checking on me periodically too. He's... He's a hell of a guy. So, I, I mean, I got these core friends and there's many other ones that I picked up on the podcast that I also want to touch base with. But but we reach out sometimes and we look for clues and answers to what's going on in our life. But in the end, with all the negativity, with all the grief, with all the pain, with all the downturn, I'm here talking to you because I know this isn't forever. This too shall pass. Boy, that was a mantra and actually a story that got me going th through my darkest days when I came off of benzodiazepines. I, it really helped me get through that, the whole this too shall pass, because everything does pass. Sometimes it takes a really long time, like for me. <laughs> But it does pass, even though my recovery has taken almost 10 years from, and I'm still working on it. It hasn't always been the same. There've been some really good periods of time in here where I've been relatively symptom free. And then other times like more recently where they've hit me a little harder. But this does pass. Life will move on. There are other things around the corner, and I want to be here for that. So I hang on. I hang on. And I work on tools. I do some meditation. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos lately of uh, Vegas um, nerve reset and hypnosis for sleeping and, and a lot of meditations from from some meditation teachers and I've been watching a lot of yoga lately and doing some yin yoga which is one of my favorites that I used to do and um, with the deep stretching and kind of getting my body out of this just locked state it's not just the nerve pain but all my muscles have been just locked up and it happens sometimes and so I just I fight it I find ways to, I think fight it is a term I'm always a little leery of. I think fighting against something that is, is fruitless. I have a condition now that affects me in a negative way. I can fight it all I want to, but it's not going to make it go away. But I think with acceptance and learning to work around it and with it and manage it, I think I have more success. So that, that's the mental tool I use. And, and sometimes I fall back on, you know, other more simplistic things of just breathing exercises, calming my, my, my nervous system down. Boy, for those of you who get severe anxiety or panic attacks, you know what that's like. It overtakes you, completely overtakes you. Sometimes the only thing you can do is some deep breathing to slow to slow down the sympathetic nervous system that's running amok and bring your parasympathetic nervous system, that, that calming system, more into play so that 
you start to chill out. You're, you're less fight or flight and you're more relaxed and, and chill. And we need tools to help bring us back to that sometimes. Sometimes we, our brains run amok. We ruminate, we loop, and they just take off with us. And we need to sometimes find ways of reining that back in. Easing the stress of that. And learning to let go of the worry and just be for a while. And just be for a while. I think I mentioned to you before that sometimes during the recordings of this, my brain is trying to think of what that big climax, um, resolute um, <laughs> epiphany <laughs> is from this episode that big lesson in the end i recently it was letting go of control and um another one was different things of i think recently was the lessons i learned from yesterday the movie and sitting vigil and what that does for me and and what i picked up from all i've been through it has been a roller coaster for me these past few years and But I'm, I'm better for going through it. And that's the thing we often forget. I'm better for going through it. I don't want it. I sure as hell don't want to go through the stuff I've been through again. And I sure as hell would like to get a lot of the people back that I've lost. But it didn't work that way. So we just keep moving forward. I'm in my kitchen right now and I'm literally taking one step forward with my right foot, one step with my left, right, left, right, left. Oh, I got to clean my dishes from lunch. Oh, sorry, that's a sidetrack. Right, left, <laughs> right, left, and just keep moving. My days aren't great right now. But I know with all confidence it won't always be that way. It won't always be that way. One day I won't have to worry about somebody stabbing me in the foot with a knife. Hopefully sooner more than later, but one day I won't have to worry about that. One day I'll be able to eat kind of what I want to for dinner and not think that there goes my paresthesia kicking in and I got pins and needles all over my body. One day I'll be able to look at all the loss and all the people who have left and remember them fondly. Remember all they've provided to us. Remember all the good and the memories. And not focus as much on the loss, on the pain, on the grief. Not there yet, but one day we will. And one day my wife will too, and she's in the middle of it right now. And so you got to be strong for the people in your life. Many of you have kids. You know what it's like to be strong for the ones who count on you. Many of you have spouses or close partners and you got to be strong for them sometimes or for your dog or for your cousins or for your friends or for your colleagues you got to be strong sometimes I've not felt very strong lately I felt pretty weak at times but I'm trying and I know I have a condition or conditions that quite possibly make it harder for me to be strong at times. When you got ruminating thoughts in your head running over and over again, when you stay up at night worrying about what tomorrow will bring, when you got all this loss and everything else, I mean, yeah, those things add up and they make it a little more complicated.
they make it a little more complicated. Oh, I want to close my door here. The sun has come back out. It's humid out there now. And things are starting to get warm. So close the door and get the air back on just to keep it a little cooler in the house for a while. So Murphy and I can hang out, right Murph? Yeah, I've been sending pictures of Murphy off to my wife throughout the day today. Those cheer her up and help her when she gets those. So he's had some really cute shots and that's been nice. I've also started to read more. Reading was vital to me getting through some of the hard times in my life. If I could find a good book and connect with the author and know that the author has been through something similar. I'm talking books mostly on conditions. Like I used to read a lot of anxiety books and I read tons of them. And I read books on depression. I read books on mindfulness. I've read books on, oh man, my bookshelf is just full of mental health, self-help kind of books because I'm always looking for an answer. And I still think those are really, really valuable. I believe that. My, my theory is this going into these books, and that is if you can get one thing, and I probably have mentioned this before, but I want to repeat it. If you can get one thing from a book, one thing one tool that you can use or thought that you can use going forward that can stick with you, that book is worthwhile. And I usually get at least one thing from everything I read, from every book I've read. So they are worthwhile. And it gives you a broad spectrum of things to choose from that might fit you better to help you get through. But also it connects with somebody. It connects with somebody who's been through there, is hopefully doing better now, and is telling you, hey, I got through this. You can too. That's what I've been doing on the Benzo Free podcast for years. Hey, I'm getting through this and I'm doing so much better and you can too. Unfortunately, I've taken a downturn the last year or so. For good reason. I've had a lot going on <laughs> that's hit me. Some setbacks of symptoms. A lot of grief. A lot of stress. A lot of feeling out of place. I've been lost a lot lately. And that's when I think we return to the core. Maybe that's my epiphany. <laughs> Returning to the core. There was a movie that came out years ago starring Billy Crystal, um, Bruno Kirby, who all was in it. I think it was, um, oh, the other actor's name, I can't remember. Um, and it had Jack Palance in it. Anyway, it was called City Slickers, and it was where these three guys from the city go out to a dude ranch um, as time to get away and trying to refind, refind, re refind, <laughs> find again that thing that was important. And Billy Crystal was the main character here, and he came back realizing what that one thing was. And that one thing is what Jack Palance was saying, is you got to find that one thing. And I th that's always stuck with me. See, I told you, I carry one thing from any book, any movie, anything. If I can get that one thing, then it's worthwhile. And that, what if that one thing is that one thing? <laughs> that's the lesson. But it was all about the meaning of life and what's important in life. And his answer was one thing. And Billy Crystal asked what that one thing is. And Jack's response was basically, that's up to you. What's that one thing for you? I know mine. I've never doubted it. That one thing for me is my marriage. My wife. That's the one thing. Above all else, that's most important to me. It may not be the same answer for you. It might be your kids. It might be your parents. It might be your dog. 
It's okay if it is. It might be the work you do. It might be your career. It might be the cause you're fighting for, the charity you support. It might be reaching out to other people who are suffering like yourself and trying to help them through this. But when all the, I'm going to say it, all the shit hits the fan, I was trying not to swear. I mean, I don't, I swear on some freely, but sometimes I don't, and I can mark it differently on the, on YouTube and stuff when I don't have language, but damn it, I'm putting it in here just because I, I don't like being that restrained. Um, but when the shit hits the fan, what's the thing you count on? What's the thing that's most important? What's the one thing you absolutely don't want to lose? Now, I know if I lost that, I would also push through, recover, and move on, and maybe hopefully find it again, maybe one day. But I sure don't want to do that. My one thing is my wife. That's the one thing that's most important to me. Now, I don't want to put all my burdens on her. That's not what this means. I'm not trying to tell her that she is everything and with, without her, I will curl up and die. And that's why I just mentioned, yeah, if something happened, I would find a way to move forward. But if you're asking for me, what's the one thing that's most important in your life right now? And for me, for the past 28 years, it's been my marriage, my wife. That's it for me. I don't know what yours is. I don't know. I have a lot of other things that are important, but that's the one thing that matters the most. And sometimes in life, when things get so dark and get so difficult, like right now for me, that's the one thing you can cling to. The one thing that's going to get you through. The one thing that is going to help you climb back out of the hole you find yourself in. As I'm doing my 17th lap around the kitchen island <laughs> right now, I, I like to pace and talk. It's what I do sometimes. So I'm pacing and talking inside now. Oh, this is crazy. I don't know how good this is. It's probably another one of those ramble sessions, but there's my epiphany. The one thing. What's the one thing for you? Hey, if you get in the comments, I know I don't have, still have a lot of listeners yet, and that's, that's going to change. Right now, I'm kind of enjoying, honestly, I'm enjoying the fact that this podcast is small. And even the Benzo Free one has less listeners than I used to, and I'm okay with that. I, I haven't put much energy into it because I haven't been able. I've been struggling. I've been struggling for some time now. And because a lot of things have hit me. There's reason for why I've been struggling. I just want to mention that. So it's not just because, you know. But the thing is, I was talking about something, and I'm trying to remember what it was. <laughs> brain. Oh, brain cramp. Okay. You still with me? Okay. Oh, it is. Um, it was that one thing. I was talking about the one thing and the epiphany of the one thing. It was somewhere in there. I don't know. Maybe that's my sign to wrap this up before I wear a hole in the floor <laughs> from all my pacing. Murphy's already closed his eyes and he's off into La La Land. So maybe I will sit down and check some emails and take a break for a bit. I think, wait a minute, I think I was talking about where this podcast is. Oh, yeah, and listeners. That was it. I knew I'd get back there eventually. I always, well, I don't always do, but sometimes I do. But I'm okay that it's a smaller audience right now. I really have not done much to, I've done nothing to promote it. All I do is keep making content. But I'm still feeling my way around, even though we've done 50 some episodes on Uneven and 130 or so on Benzo Free, I'm still 
kind of feeling myself around, feeling, not feeling myself around. That, boy, that, yeah, I'm glad this one, I, I kind of put a warning on it because that probably didn't sound right. I promise you, I am not feeling myself around as I'm talking to you right now. What I was trying to say is I'm trying, trying to feel my way around. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> glad I got that clarification in there. But I'm trying to feel my way around, find my way with this podcast. And I'm okay with that. I think being okay with where you're at is important sometimes. Do I want to bring in some more people to listen to the podcast? Yeah, I would like to. I'll be honest with you. I would like to and I will. But I've just not put much effort on that lately because just to get a podcast out even once a week lately has been really difficult for me. So I'm doing the best I can to keep these moving forward, but that won't always be the case. When I have more energy and more time, I will get back to things. We'll get things moving more and um, we'll see where it takes us. But for now, I'm going to keep recording these now and then, get them out to you now and then, and um, just keep moving forward one step at a time. And knowing as things get hard, at least for me, I can rely on that one thing. That one thing that keeps me going. If you'd like to put in the comments what your one thing is, I would really be curious to know what that is. And now I'm going to sign off because I have rambled a long time today. <laughs> oh, I hope this podcast episode finds you better off than I am. There you go. Although I'm not that bad. I have a lot of things hitting me right now, but I'm not that bad. I'm still hopeful. I'm still optimistic. Things will improve. And I'm still doing the best I can to be there for the, the, those in my life who count on me. That keeps me moving forward. I hope the storm clouds pass in your life and the sun comes back out as it just did in mine. You all take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, this is D. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out our podcast. I do need to remind everyone that this podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical, psychological, or professional health advice of any kind. If you or someone you know is dealing with significant mental health issues, please seek professional help. Resources can be found in our show notes and on our website at unevenpodcast.com. Take care of yourself, and I'll catch you on the flip side.